The score is a trope as talentless as gaming itself, designed to record the player's progress and achievement in a game. But most people that I've talked to believe it to be, well, an archaic and pointless feature, especially for modern larger games in this day and age. Now that big budget games are built around achieving specific tasks and missions to build upon a plot or other development, the traditional scoring system has sorta of lost its place. In other words, it's less shoot this and get a hundred points, and more shoot this and unlock a cutscene or level. There's no flashy numbers a little involved anymore. And that's not a bad thing at all, actually. It's much less gamey and provides a more intimate and immersive experience. But forget about that for a minute. Let's take a closer look at the old school method of keeping track of progress and achievement in games, the score system. How did it assist in the growth of communities through an increase in competitive zeal? Well, I'm about to tell you. Wait, first, what do you mean by the score system, you ask? Well, I'm talking about this thing right here. We've all seen it before. It's a mechanic used in all those old people video games. Well, you see, back then, even before home consoles took center stage, online multiplayer competitions, unlockables, and specific achievements were completely unheard of. Or not in the mainstream, to say the least. If you wanted to prove your gaming vigor, then you had to rack up the highest score possible to beat out your friend's scores. And that one fucker who always lied about his score, you know who you are, Tommy. How is this possible? Of course there were a few exceptions, like the primal sports games Pong and Tennis for Two, but in general, the large majority of games were built upon the rack em up principle, you know, just racking up as many points as you can. Not only did this incentivize the player to keep playing in order to beat his own high score, but this also enabled communities to be constructed over single player games and the love for said games to be spread through said competitive communities. Take that one episode of Everybody Hates Chris for example. Look at all those cool kids. They're playing games. It's cool. Having fun. Alright, alright, cat's out of the bag. This may be a big surprise because of my deep and sexy voice, but I can't say that I was alive when the arcade scene was in full swing and this trope is most prevalent. However, modern examples of this can be seen with mobile games especially. Remember that Flappy Bird fiasco last year? Do you remember how you first heard of the game? Well, I do. I was sitting around with my friends watching one of them play that abomination, then I downloaded it myself to beat his high score. I got addicted, then my sister saw me playing it and tried to beat my high score. Then it just became an enormous domino effect from there. And eventually everyone, I mean everyone, started posting things online about this game and comparing their high scores with one another. It was a beautiful sight to see, albeit extremely obnoxious. And that's just a clear cut example of the beauty of the high score system. Whether it be Space Invaders or Flappy Bird, it could spread the popularity of games like Wildfire simply through word of mouth, or tweet. Let's be honest, Flappy Bird wasn't the next Ocarina of Time. It was just its competitive aspect combined with social media that made it snowball into the juggernaut that it became. Anyways, these days, this scoring system has mainly been restricted to the mobile platform, which certainly makes the most sense because of the easy access and shareable nature of the technology. However, as consoles and gaming in general garner more finesse, the definition of competition in video games has since evolved drastically from the old BEST SCORE IN GALAGA WINS A FREE SONY WALKMAN way of gaming. What, what, what's a Sony Walkman? Anyway. Now there's multiplayer capabilities, online capabilities, 8 player smash, like what?! And with all these new updates and the gizmos and gadgets that go into tech, it's much more prevalent to see a direct competition between players over the medium, like Pong for example. What I mean by direct is that the competition in games has become a legitimate conflict between players. Victors are decided through tests of skill against other players, rather than tests of skill against a certain level or set of AI. Take any kart racer, FPS, or fighting game for instance and you can easily see what I mean. These games are widely popular, especially for their multiplayer modes, not just because of their single player modes, especially because of their fun multiplayer modes, and sometimes repetitive multiplayer modes. Now don't get me wrong, while this style of competition is perhaps the most prevalent in gaming today, the speedrunners and the completionists of this world are still communities that are alive and well, and I would certainly say that these communities compete with one another through achieving goals very similar in nature to how it used to be, just the player versus the game, and then the results of that conflict in comparison with the results of others in order to determine who is the best. But I digress. While the things that I've been talking about seem to be kind of minute ideas, these evolutions in the way in which we play can truly reflect how the mindset of gamers has evolved as well. It's really cool to observe how gaming has grown through the years, socially, competitively, and as an overall experience. With new feats in technology and hardware comes new spins on the way in which we play video games and build communities with one another. And that is a beautiful thing. My name is Ninjani and thank you for watching my video.